Hello and welcome back to Hustle Cat. We are here with Mad Haze. He is angry. He's very angry. And it's very new. But he knows magic now, so maybe he'll be able to help. So here goes. I pull back and there's a fire in his eyes I've never seen. Don't worry about it. I think we just need to escape. Maybe he got what he wanted. I don't know. It doesn't sound like it. There's a noise at the door and we both freeze. He's here. Stay here. I'll take care of this. No, no, it's okay. I'll get it. Holy crap. Now that I've had a few minutes to let everything catch up, my ankle hurts like hell. I try to hobble to the door, but it flies open before I have a chance. I ready myself to fight a murderer armed with a bat, but it's... Finley? <gasps> you guys! Oh my god! The curse! She grabs my hands and does a little dance, but stops when I wince in pain. Oh, sorry, sweetie. You okay? Did you twist your ankle? Yeah. What's this about the curse? It's broken. We're all human again. Of course, I miss my jelly donut fame, but I'll live. Ooh, I'll start a new vlog. I... What's wrong? You look real messed up about it. It's Graves. The curse must have broken because something happened to him. Graves! What happened? Where is he? And suddenly, everyone is here. The curse must have broken for everyone at once. This should be good news, but... Oh, Reese. It's bad. He's still out there, I think. He's still out where? He lunges, but Mason intercedes. Stop. They're injured. What happened to him? You have to tell me what happened. Someone attacked us. I have no idea who he was, but he had a grudge against Graves. His name was Noct, I think? I don't know who that is. What happened then? I'm guessing he's not in the pit. Maybe he was anyways. I don't know. This Noct guy, I think he beat Graves. Reese clutches at his chest. He looks like he might fall over and pass out. I reach out to ease him to the seat, but he swats me away. I knew it. I knew he was going to get it over his head. I knew another witch was on his tail, but he told me to stay out of it. Damn it. I could have helped. Why didn't he let me help? Reese sinks into the couch and slams the armrest with his fist. Reading on furniture isn't going to do anything, but if that helps him feel better. He sinks his fingers into the cushion and looks hard at the floor. His eyes gloss over. He's holding back tears with everything he's got. I feel really bad. For all his blustering, Reese admired Graves a lot. I think he was the only one of us who really did. I guess now, after Graves saved me like that, I kind of do too. Too little too late, I suppose. So, now what happens? What do we do? We avenge him. Of course. We kill Noct. Whoa, whoa. That's a bit extreme. All's fair in a duel. If that's what this guy wants, that's what he gets. When he comes for the cafe, I'll take it back from him. Comes for the cafe? Why would he do that? When a witch defeats another in a duel, they take the loser's property. But he'll have to beat me to get it. Is Graves really dead? I don't know. If Nox's intent was to kill him... Damn it. Now Landry's the one who looks pissed. This is kind of scary. I've never seen him do anything but laugh and smile before. So it's almost as jarring as seeing Reese cry. Magic is a scourge. This always happens when you get too close. Reese's head snaps up. And what do you know about magic? You haven't studied. But I thought... All eyes turn on Hayes and he climbs up. I put my hands on his and give it a reassuring squeeze. He gives me a smile and his shoulders soften. Yeah? I didn't think Graves was really in on all of this. I sort of thought he was just some eccentric old guy who got caught up in things. Of course he's in on it, the strongest witch in the city. Well, was. I immediately regret saying that when Reese shoots me a furious glossy-eyed stare. This feels so surreal. I thought magic was more 
gentle than this. Is this what magic is really like? Bad enough to um, dispose of graves? Of course it is. How else would this be happening? But he was too strong to get cursed. That part was just us. But he wasn't too strong to not curse us. Does that matter now? He's gone. This Noct is going to be here to take everything else, too. He spits the name like it's profane. Reese launches himself from the chair and storms to the door. He puts his hand in his pocket, like he's concealing a weapon. How would he just take the cafe? That's not how property works. They're like deeds and stuff. Not that I know much more about it than that, but I'm pretty sure my parents didn't kill a witch to buy their house. Of course it's more complicated. I don't exactly have time to explain witch territories. Just know that when you're defeated in a duel, you give your property to the winner. So unless Graves gave it away before the fight, Noct owns the cafe now. I remember Graves grabbing my hand and staring through me. I remember his words. I think he did. What? Before he fought, before he told me to run away, he told me that he gave everything to me. You? Why you? Your newborn baby stumbling through the witching world. That's not fair. You can't handle it. And clearly it was just an opportunity. He's upset though. Hayes squeezes my hand. This time I'm the one comforted by his gentle strength. Like a low flame. I can sure as hell try. I don't know what I can do, but I'm here with you, Avery. Well, do whatever you want. I'm gonna get graves. Not by yourself, you aren't. Better wait for me. This isn't your concern. It absolutely is. He's my boss, too. But someone should stay behind and watch the cafe. And Avery. That's why I'm here. And me. Oh, actually, I should go get Mochi. I'm worried about him being left alone at my place. If Noct knows where I live, who's to say he won't hold my cat hostage? Oh, in that case. Worry not, because Team Finley and Hayes will go on a rescue mission. Let's go, Hayes. I'd rather not leave Avery, if that's okay. I know some first aid, so I can at least make myself useful and patch up their ankle. Hmm. Yeah, gotcha. I can work with that. Guys, I'm just some screw-up kid. You don't have to do this for me. Of course we do. Yeah, you're our screw-up kid. We stick together through thick and thin, us cursed cats. Tears of gratitude sting my eyes. I never thought I'd have friends like this, who'd endanger themselves for me. My high school friends would have run off the moment someone said curse. I love these guys. I vigorously scrub my face. I don't want to get too mushy. I hobble back to the couch. Okay, we can do this, right? Yeah! Promise me nobody's going to get hurt, okay? Please. Give us more credit than that. Yeah. This guy will be sorry if he underestimates us. Then we enact our plans. Reese, Landry, and Finley all head out together. It's so weird to see them walk away from the cafe as humans. Hayes vanishes into the bathroom for the first aid kit. I hate that noise. Mason dips into the kitchen, and I hear horrific screeching noise like metal against linoleum. It's probably exactly what it is. What is she doing? She returns triumphantly. She smirks at me, or more accurately, at the dumb gawking face I'm making. I lock the door. With what? An industrial range? Probably. She gives me this self-satisfied smirk, then paces in front of the front door and the windows like a sentry. Oh my god, who needs magic? She can snap that knocked guy in half with her hands. Hayes is back with bandages and a bag of ice. Gingerly, he removes my shoe and rolls up my pant leg to get a better look at my ankle. I'm glad I'm wearing socks that don't have holes. Oof, my ankle doesn't look great, but it could be a lot worse. I don't think it's sprained, just twisted. You just need rest. He slowly, neatly wraps my ankle with one of the stretchy bandages. When he pins it in place, it's like a pro's work. A professional ankle wrapper? 
Do you know a lot of first aid, Hayes? You're way calmer than I expected. Uh, I studied in scouts. Injuries and things don't bother me. Never have. Not everything makes me feel anxious. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad you're here to patch me up. He smiles sheepishly, but averts his gaze to the ground, toward the ice pack. He props up my foot on one of the big puffy ottomans, then places the ice on my ankle. Oh my god, does that feel good. Now just keep it elevated and rest a little, and take the ice off in 20 minutes. Thanks again, Dr. Hayes. Uh, I'm going to go make some coffee. I think everyone will need it. I mean, that's true. I stress nap once Hayes goes back upstairs. Sometimes I need a system shut down before I can think straight again. I think even the cats know something is up, because they all swarm me. I've got two on my lap and the others pile around me. It's soothing to hear them and feel their little paws stretch out at me. I hope it's helping them, too. I hear the gentle clack of ceramic against ceramic, and prop one eye open. Hayes has set a cup and saucer in front of me. I think you've got a better idea, but here's a cappuccino if you need it. Just the way you like it. Take a coffee nap. I'm gonna get spoiled by you sooner or later. <laughs> I'm just trying to be nice. You don't have to try very hard. You are. Are what? Nice, of course. And cute. Oh, okay. You're pretty cute, too. Mm. I'm so exhausted, I'm just gonna rest my eyes for a minute. I feel a couch shift next to me, and then Hayes is there. He puts his head on my shoulder. I don't bother opening my eyes. If I keep them closed, I'll forget all the other stuff. I shoot awake when I hear the door fly open. Is it knocked? Did he come right through the front door? Can witches come in uninvited, or is that vampires? Oh, it's Finley again. She bounces the door against her hip since her hands are full of cat carrier. The fussy lump inside is unmistakable. Wow, you are so whiny. Hold your pants on, baby. Mochi! Did you have any trouble? Is everything okay? It's fine, though I had to lure him into the cat carrier with treats and he hated every moment of being in there. So, same as always. That's good. How about it? Should I unleash the beast? Yeah. Mochi, if you cause any trouble with the other cats, you're going right back in. Got it? Like he's going to choose now to start listening. Finley opens the carrier and he shoots out like a furry cannonball. Then he stands there, dumbstruck. He's got his own troubles now in playing nice with the cafe cats, but at least he's here. That's one less thing Noct could use against me. Should I get out of here now? Am I interrupting something? Oh, look at her. She thinks she can be so smug just because Hayes sent her that kiss selfie. Yeah, yeah, I told you. She's gonna post that. She's not going to post that. She's actually more respectful. You're interrupting my sleep, that's what. You know what I mean. Finley, you're impossible. I hear a faint snore next to me. Hayes is laughing too? Traitor. I can't be mad. I'm glad our stupid blustering took enough pressure off him to get him to laugh. And off me too, for just a second. Finley kind of did something good for both of us, I guess. I see movement in front of the cafe. Is it? No. There's too many people for it to be knocked. Anyway, I know that hat anywhere. It's Reese and Landry, already back with Graves. Or what used to be Graves. Now he looks like a forgotten statue, flaking bits of rust off as they haul him up on the sidewalk. Are their hands glowing? I squint to get a better look. I was wondering how they didn't turn to rust. Oh, they look like... garden gloves? Glowing garden gloves? They set Graves in front of the cafe, then come inside. Reese peels his gloves off, then helps Landry with his. Nobody touch him unless you're properly enchanted. The rust spreads easily. Are you going to leave him out there? He looks like a huge ugly yard gnome. Not that I'm going to say anything. We can't risk the cats coming over to investigate. They might touch the rust and reset it could spread to them too. I can't take him upstairs. Dracula would be at risk. Poor Dracula. 
Oh, his cat is named Dracula. That's so cute. Oh, and Dracula's a girl. I love that. I know she'll be heartbroken. That's so sad. So, now what do we do? We get ready. Who here knows a thing or two about magic? I mean, I know the two of us have learned a thing or two, though we're hardly experts. I guess we'll do the best we can to teach you, though. Speak for yourself. You can't teach me anything I don't already know. Wait, yeah, Reese, how do you know so much about all this? I've learned a thing or two in my time. I'm not assistant manager just because I'm good at accounting. I have no idea what kind of magic you've been learning, Avery, but I won't let you steal the spotlight. I'll beat him. Haven't you been listening? He beat Graves. We gotta team up and come up with a plan. We fight alone. He picks us off. We all jump in. We have a chance. See? Mason gets it. Well, what do you propose? Haven't you ever cram studied before finals? We'll do that, using the tried and true gray method. We shove enough magic in our short-term memory to beat him. We probably forget it in five minutes after, but who cares by then? We'll be done. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You got a better one? See? It'll be fine. I'm basically an expert here, too. I got through half my book reports without even opening the book. J just take time to study properly. Alright, someone get me the book and I'll get this started. If I ever need a confirmation that I don't want to be a teacher, I get it today. I try leading a sort of haphazard class on magic, but it's like herding cats. Reese keeps correcting me. I think Mason fell asleep. Landry keeps getting distracted and wandering off. Finley's interested, but she's also interested in her fun. Hayes is too shy to actually try anything. Hell, it looks like Mochi is paying more attention than they are. This is important, so I keep trying, and I think they do too, but I'm exhausted. It would be really nice if Mochi just started using magic. That'd be really fun. Look, I'm beat, y'all. I gotta take a nap. Can you just sort of, like, independent study? Sure, you should get some rest. We can take it from here. Yeah, that sounds great. But we have to prepare to fight. But we don't even know if this guy's coming. We could, um, take guard shifts. Right, we'll go in shifts. Avery can rest, two of us can stand guard, and the rest can move the cats into the basement. The, the basement? Why? I don't want any of them in the line of danger. They're safer if they're away from us. I doubt Noct cares about cats. He won't go chasing them. Ugh, but then we gotta herd them all down there. We can do it if we work together. Well, literally hurting cats. You better get Mochi and Dracula, too. I don't want to leave Dracula alone. She must be scared. Sure. Can you get her and then keep the cats company? No, I'm taking first shift as guard. Graves would want it that way. I'll take care of them, Landry. The cats like me. Great. I'll take the other guard shift. Everybody else, relax. All right, we're going to call it here, but thank you very much for joining me, and hopefully things go well in this next episode, but I guess we'll have to wait and find out. Thanks again, and take care. <laughs>